uh, what that opening sequence kind of brought to our attention, and and they address it again later on in this this first part when they talk to another first responder. Anytime somebody dies of an overdose, and, and this was something that honestly, um, I'm glad that they brought up because we talk so much about how it affects the friends and the family and the loved ones and the people that knew this person directly. But what we kind of learned in this documentary and what didn't really occur to me is that every time there's an overdose that also affects the police that showed up to the house, the EMTs, any of the first yes. responders, because they are having to go to a call knowing that they are about to encounter a dead body. And I so, talk about and, that and there was a gentleman a who was an EMT. I think I want to say he was in Kentucky. Uh, and he said that basically what, what inspired him to get into it is he was in high school and two kids in his class one day at the same time dropped out of an overdose. But he said every time he goes to one of these calls, he does wonder how much longer do I want to do this because it really kind of sucks driving to a call knowing that there's a dead body on the other side of that, you know, when I get to the that destination. So I think it is important, important to bring up that 500,000 deaths, while yes, it affects anyone close that knew the person directly, it also affects anyone who comes in contact either directly or indirectly with that deceased body after the fact like i said could be a coroner could be a doctor it could be police officer first responder and unfortunately too not to completely go off the topic here and, and i'm sure we'll probably take a deeper dive into this topic particularly in a in a later edition of the podcast in a later episode but it's unfortunately why we see so much substance abuse and addiction amongst first responders and in that line of work because of the trauma and the PTSD that comes with having to constantly go out to calls like that, knowing that there's a dead body waiting for them when they get there, unfortunately. Right. And, you know, in this particular EMT talked about how in his, you know, small town, essentially, it was a very rural area, opioid abuse had become such a prominent and prevalent issue. And so, you know, the idea that there is this sense of hopelessness knowing that you're going to a call and that this is just an ongoing issue that your community is suffering with. I mean, I can't imagine what that, that burden feels like to have to see that same problem again and again and feel powerless to be able to, to make an impact. You know, maybe you're there and you, you go on a call and you're able to remind somebody and, and at the same time, you know, gosh, you hope that they get help because you say all the time, you can't get help if you're dead, but if you if you revive this person, if they make it out okay, there's that that wondering, I'm sure too, of like, you know, what happens to them? And I I know for me that would be very emotionally grueling because um, you know, I, I have a very hard time sort of separating myself from um yeah. from things like that. I always want to know how that person's doing, you know. I uh at one point in my life, looked into getting certified to be, uh, to do therapy for people. Cause yeah, I, I do very genuinely care. I, I find that I connect with people well, um, that I'm able to explain things that people are able to relate to pretty well. And yet I realized like, I can't, I can't turn that off that part of my brain. I would worry so much. So I can only imagine what this gentleman, you know, was going through. And I'm sure he represents a lot of people in that field and i just can't imagine you know i feel for them yeah i mean it's it's um it's one of the things that doesn't get the attention that it deserves unfortunately because and, and to an extent rightfully so we we spend so much of, of our time and energy on the person suffering from the addiction and the overdose but and we and we do talk As about we it a little should, bit, you know. Yeah, no, of course, rightfully so. And we do also bring up and talk about to an extent how their actions or their overdose affects their friends and family members and loved ones and those closest to them. But unfortunately, the side of things that doesn't get the attention it deserves is how it affects those that come in contact. Like like I mentioned, the EMTs, the police officers, the doctors at the hospital or the coroners. You know, anyone that has to see somebody who and and know what happened to them and and unfortunately like i said a, a, a call or a, a result of that is is we do see and we have been seeing an uptick of um substance abuse and addiction within that profession uh the the first responders and and emts and whatnot 